as 2023 approaches, one thing that's always on the top of my mind is investing. So today we are going to discuss TFSA, RRSP, and real estate investing. Keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not my financial advice. This is just my opinion. This is what I would do if I was getting into some TFSA, RRSP, or real estate investments. Thank you so much for watching the video. My name is Mike Carpino. Please hit that subscribe button right here and let's get into it. Now, if you have the anticipation of January approaching like myself, you're already well aware that you're going to have another $6,500 that you can put into your tax-free savings account. Now, if you have not contributed anything to your tax-free savings account up to this point, you can contribute up to $88,000, which is amazing. This account is one of my favorite to use because it's self-explanatory. You put your money in there, it's tax-free to remove it, and you can do this at your leisure with the allotted allowment that the government gives you. So this year, if you already have your previous contributions maxed out, you can put an additional $6,500 either with your bank, with your financial advisor, however you do your investing, you have $6,500 more to play with and use. Now, this tax-free account, aside from it being tax-free, which is amazing, is another tool for you as a potential home buyer. You can put your money in these accounts. Hopefully, if your investments go well, and maybe you don't invest in Tesla because it hasn't been great over the last uh, six months or so, maybe you've made some money and now you have a larger down payment for your next property or your first house. This is what these accounts are for, for you to take advantage of that risk reward and build up some more net worth for yourself. Now, secondarily, you got RSP time and Typically, people are thinking about RSPs right before tax season, which is going to be here before we know it, when they're trying to figure out how much they need to contribute so they don't have to pay as much taxes if it's going to come to that. Now, this is a one reason why people use the RSP account, but in my case, when I'm in real estate, my first thought about RSP is first-time home buyers. And that is, if you do not have an RSP account and you have never purchased a house before, you can use this RSP account and you can put in up to $35,000 and remove it tax-free when you purchase a property and use it towards your down payment, whatever you want associated with that actual transaction. Now, I do have other videos going over all of the first-time homebuyer incentives, but this one is one of my favorites because it acts very similarly to a tax-free savings account for that first $35,000. One of the best parts about having these options is that they are options for you. You may not have the money to put into a TFSA and an RSP, but should you choose to utilize one of these vessels for your investments, you might see some great gains. And being in a down market that we are in currently, it's a great opportunity, I think, for somebody to sit down with a financial advisor, not myself, obviously, and look at what some good opportunities are. Maybe there is a really good stock that's been hit really hard, but it's got a very good financial background and the foundation is there for that stock to skyrocket again in the future. Opportunity is something that you really need to grab hold of if it's there and take it as far as you can for your financial future. Now that we've covered TFSA and RSP, once again, like the video, subscribe to the channel, so we can get more people watching these videos and so they can learn a couple little tips here and there to get them on that path to home ownership or financial freedom. Next, we're going to discuss real estate as an investment. And the best part about real estate is it's not, it's not a one-way track. You can utilize real estate in several different ways. You might just want to buy a property as an investment. If you're younger, continue living at home paying very little on your month-to-month -month basis when you're living at home. Your expenses are going to be quite a bit less than they would be if you had a mortgage and you lived in the property. But while you're living at home, you've got somebody renting out your property, maybe covering most of your mortgage, paying down your mortgage. And when you are ready, you can either sell that property or keep it for your financial future. And you are going to have to really think about what your goals are with real estate because there's so many avenues that you can approach. If you are adamant that you want to rent your primary residence, that's fine. But I still think it's a great idea that 
owning real estate as an investment tool. If you don't want it as your primary, maybe just own an investment property and build that equity for yourself. Now, as the saying goes, 100% rent is 100% interest. So you're always going to be paying more renting than you would even paying at a higher rate mortgage. Doesn't mean that it's the right decision for everybody, but it does give you something to think about when it comes to using your hard earned money on an investment like real estate. Now, not only can you use real estate as an investment, as your primary residence, you can also use it to move around in the market. You might own a property, you might live there for several years. Great. Now you can sell it, you can move up and use that built up equity for a larger property. So, these three options give you a lot of flexibility for your property and what you want to do with it. Using your tax-free savings account and your RRSP account are great options for you if you want to continue to build wealth for yourself. Now, once again, I'm not a financial advisor. This is just what I would do with my money. I would start by getting my money into a TFSA or RRSP account, build up some potential growth if the market is great and you have some great picks and your financial advisor is you know, doing a great job for you. And once you've built up some additional money from doing that, you're going to have a larger down payment. You're going to have more flexibility to get into the real estate market. So if I was starting fresh today, I'd be investing in a tax-free savings or RRSP. Then I'd be using that growth to potentially buy my first property. And from there, keep yourself diversified, have some stocks, have some property. That way you're bulletproof if things go wrong and the market doesn't favor you as the current market isn't fantastic for a lot of people. So get in when you can, get in where you can and make your decision your own decision. Don't let my opinion sway you in any way and don't let anybody else tell you what to do. Think about your goals and your future and follow whatever it is that you're looking for. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.